I, I'm going to talk to Dick and see what that address might be. I just put down his 88 Greenfield sure. Road. Um, and the, the $36,000 paid quarterly. Okay. Now, the, um, thir it's, it's 37. It was around 37. What's that? It, Barbara gave me figures that were roughly. I mean, obviously, well, until right, we actually right go now, out right now, right now, the South County EMS is paying the Deerfield Fire District, South Deerfield Fire District, thirty-six thousand dollars a year. They're also paying Sunderland. <clears throat> I don't know what that figure is, and they're also paying Waitley. Another figure. So this will uh, is already going to be cheaper, right? You know. Oh, I know, but. <clears throat> If if we, I mean, if we get the building donated, uh, absolutely, then there's it doesn't matter what you put here for rent, right. but um, we want, we just want something reasonable that will cover expansion or whatever. Right. But if I, we went to town meeting mm -hmm. to build this building, mm -hmm. Barbara thought, I, and I used the 850. Mm -hmm. So if we borrowed 850 over 30 years, it's about 37. Um, hundred a month, which is forty four thousand four hundred. I so I think I mean we've got to be up front that this is, I mean it would be forty, but I, I'm I don't feel bad about it, Kip, because I thought we were competing against forty four hundred a month from Waitley, but it's forty four hundred a month for rent. Then on top of that right. is All the construction. Rent of construction, so it becomes almost ten thousand dollars a month. Yes. So but only for only for five years. So. Correct. Right, and then it drops but, down to forty-four. But, so the thirty-seven <clears throat> a month, which so it ends up to be forty-four thousand four hundred. That's that's still cheaper. It is. Um, I I was going to propose this was going to be the least, regardless of how we get that building. Well, I I don't think we can go to our town and say. We've got to cover whatever it costs to build it. it. It's close, but then again, I mean, there's there's a price that you're going to pay, in my mind, to keep it here, if that's what the, the, the people want. I mean, this is going to be, well, this yeah. will be the only building in town that the town has ever built where we're actually going to get money back from it, you know? I know, but I, I, I think, to be fair... I, I, we have to cover our expenses, and forty-four thousand a year is not bad. But why would we want to do thirty-six? That means we're paying for. We're, well, it's eight thousand. It is. It is eight thousand dollars more. But I mean, you think of the things that we buy in this town. I know. Eight, but, I mean, but I think you spend twelve thousand dollars trapping mosquitoes. This is only eight thousand dollars to have an ambulance service in our town. Yeah, but I, I, don't I, know. I, I mean, I, I would just like to put forty-four. I think. I think we need to say that we're going to cover our expenses. Well, one of the conversations the other night at Board of Oversight was that we shouldn't be looking at how much it, I mean, we should be looking, but they, they didn't put a price on on emergency services, right? We were all right. kind of almost getting chastised for saying this, you know, talking about cost. Right. Um, so, uh, I'm kind of torn. I'm not really sure. I do. I, I. I. do want to cover the cost, but I also think there is a cost that the town would be bearing as well to keep to keep it here. That, that's that's my thought. So you know? well, and and and, might and be splitting well, the, the, the I mean, thing I'm that I'm screen. looking at. This is at the top of the room. We're I would. This is what I would expenses. like to for us to propose. Them. Regardless, of, there's still a possibility that we might get this. At you know oh, a lot I, less. Expensive. I think so we can and and as well. and even well, even if it doesn't go the way I'm really hoping it to, we still might get a donation that mm -hmm. would offset some of that. Oh, so that's absolutely. that's why absolutely. I feel that this okay. is a, well a when good, you good when place. you when you the problem is we have to go to town meeting for on the 14th, and do you think we can get an answer by the 14th? Because to say that we're uh, yeah, going to get... Yeah, I, I, I think so. One way or the other, okay. yes, we can. I, I mean, I'm going to say yes, we can. You know, I'm going to just assume if we don't get an answer, I'm going to take that as a negative answer. Right. So that's the only way you can okay. deal with it. You can't that's stretch true. this out forever, you know. All right. You just well, gotta, you I mean, deal with what's in front of you. I, I feel fairly confident that we will get a minimum yeah. donation towards this expense. But 
So, all right. I mean, as long as you are aware, both of you, that the 44. No, I, I, I knew that. Cover the loan if, free and I, clear. I, I, I understood is, is that. Is the loan free and clear. So right. if we offer 36, that is really assuming a donation or that we're covering the or, cost. Or, yeah, we're covering the cost. Yeah. Okay. But, and and I, I don't think that that would be uh, a, a, a big hard sell to the community. I don't know. I mean, I know that all of the phone calls and emails and people that I run into, what they say they want, I, you know, and like I said, all of the things that we do spend money on in this town, that's a very minimal amount to okay. pay for it, you know? Okay. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm Well, we can talk about some more next week, too, when I get yeah. this more finalized. And I will run this by Wendy as well, so. Yeah, I'll and just keep working so on it. Just so you know that this, the, all, this entire lease agreement was, you know, developed by a, 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 oh, yeah, a local attorney. So, yeah. yeah, it's, okay. All right. So we, we can think about this for a week and talk about it. Yep. Next yeah. Week, yeah. Right? Yes. Okay. yeah. Yes. I'll put it back on the agenda. Okay. Um, debris management plan. Um, I spoke to Kevin. And Kevin is working with um, Tracy Rogers from the FERCOG. Okay. And um, they are, there's no, there, we have no ability to have a site, DEP approved site in our town, unless it's on somebody's like farmland or something. You mean if we had a. Yeah, uh, because you need, you have to have, well, for example, you have to have a, a place for appliances and all that kind of stuff. And so. Um, if, there was a, if there was a bad. Right, this okay. is if it's a really bad. Mm -hmm. So um, Tracy is working with Montague because Montague has the regional pre-approved site as well as Orange and the one, um, there's one out in West County. And so um, what Tracy's gonna do is see if we can get um, on the regional site, get an okay with Montague. Then we have to resubmit our debris management plan with our name on it. Mm -hmm and you list the regional site. Now, of course, in an emergency, you can do a lot of stuff. So, so, so but, are you saying that we could maybe use Montague site as our? Yes, we okay. can, because it's already pre-approved as a regional site. What and we have to do is be able to work with Montague. This is, I had gone to the Homeland Security meeting, and that's when I found out that we had approved our debris management plan in the select board meeting because the FERCOG had gone through and done this plan and the template. And it was our understanding, and Tracy, who works for the FERCOG, it was her understanding, too, that you just had to approve it at the select board meeting and then it was all set. And then we found out that you have to go through the same review process with FEMA and MEMA. So you send it to MEMA, and then they approve it, and then send it to FEMA, as if they did the regional plan. So they approved the regional plan, then each one of our communities Okay. All 26 has to go through and do okay. a resubmittal. But at the same time, we have to have the MOU with Montague okay. as part of the plan, which mm -hmm. nobody has. Just so this is all getting worked out. I, before I forget, I don't want to skip around, but I, I got it from Montague officials that their sewage treatment plan is going to start accepting sludge again soon. Oh, good. Wonderful. Yeah, they got that sorted that out. There was, a, most, there was a concerted complaint. Mm -hmm. to DEP on that because they were really harassing money yeah. for no reason. And costing everybody a ton and of money. And costing everybody in Western Mass a ton, a so ton of money. what's the cost of this? Is there any cost to this? Or this no, is just no. A this is because this is this one is of the things kind of that... This is just getting an idea if you have a disaster. One of, right. Well, this is one of the things that, for me, was very critical to get done for Homeland Security to do because it's a huge... It's, it's like this thick. Mm -hmm. And you have to submit it and uh, and if you don't have a pr approved debris management plan if you have a storm there's no FEMA reimbursement I see and so, so it's critical plan, to have it but you have to set it up a certain Ahead way of time. and poor Kevin has been scrambling all over town and none of our properties are big enough to do all these to take all these, all these you know you got to yeah you got to set up all these spots so you need about 48 acres to have a wow, Debris approved debris management site. What are they doing in the city? <laughs> I know. Well, they carved it out to the outside. They yeah. put a free sign for yeah. <laughs> Carol, the sign. I don't know. Anyway, I don't want to even go there. Roger. I know. Oh. I want to make sure you come back up. So why don't we yes. go ahead and have Roger and and Natural Bakers come up, and we'll start all over again. <laughs> 
So, uh, so this, Roger, thank you for coming in. We were trying to set up a meeting because everybody wanted to talk to you. So, um, when you were here. Yeah, we were speaking out in the parking lot, and I think um, we were all under the impression that the American way would, of course, become a public way that it would, you know, mean that that water line would be the water district's responsibility, like really ownership mm -hmm. by them. But that is not the case, is what I agree with Roger, and um, that it would have to be accepted by his mm -hmm. board. That they are not okay. obligated to accept it. Um, and, you know, we can do that if we take that. So, we can make the responsibility for it. Now, even, though it's a public, even though it's a public way, Roger? It doesn't matter if it's a public way. It's just like, I, mean, I think when someone wants a town road in you know, a public way here, it's going to go to town meeting, yeah. and everybody's going to vote on it. So, they can build it to town specs, but the town speaks really want to take it over. Right, but I guess my way of thinking is, um, I could be wrong, but when Crestview Avenue was built, they put, they put water in the so yeah, yeah. and the town was, they accepted the pro, and, and the water district accepted the water. And you could argue that there's no benefit to the district because all the homes are there are already, not, they're not customers, so there's no future growth for the water. And you moved that to other streets and got away from dead ends. Yeah. So those are the managed jobs. Okay. So, you know, I think it's something here, um, as a group, we would like to go, you know, we feel strongly about it, we want to try and, and work with them to see if there's any way we can make it beneficial and keep getting informed today that, you know, we would file and go in front of this board. And it's just for usage and the size of the name and the service of that and the building. So no, no, well, they are the associates. They are on that five pond also. And you get water to do it, that block building that's kind of sold. They get water. So like even this, this little piece right here, Mm -hmm. So sorry, this is Sugarloaf, and then Jewett, that Paper Street is here, Mary right. and this, which I thought came on Jewett, is actually... No, it's between yeah, two homes. Yeah, between two homes. And uh, so, like, who's, who's well, when Oxford that? owned it, Oxford was responsible, now the town was responsible for it. Mm -hmm. So the processes for, for a line becoming part of your water district and your responsibility is filling out that form, going to your meeting, and they accept it? Not, no, that doesn't mean they don't accept it. That means that you're going to grant you permission to hook on to our system, and we know how much water you're going to use. So, like, we'll say, I'm going to say, some brewery comes into town, and it's going to use a zillion gallons. Maybe we can't supply it, and we can't go say, well, we can't hook up here. You don't have that water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how do we get it, how do we get you guys to accept it? You could go to the commissioners uh, and ask them to accept it. You know, I'm not going to speak for them, but... Mm -hmm. Oh, so that we would be petitioning with you, because... Correct. I think that yeah. all these parties would yeah. probably go together and petition for it. Right. We mm -hmm. would all show up together. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we're going to let Kip... Okay. So I just, I just wanted you guys to hear that because I think we were all yeah. thinking something different. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, we, no, were. It's, we, we were. We were. Everything that he said, that we, we've spoken about this before. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, actually, just so I know, Roger, how often does the uh, board meet, the commission meet? We just have a meeting uh, they meet by uh, monthly. Monthly? Yeah. Okay. Oh. So maybe other one? Oh, no. Oh, twice a month. Oh, twice a month. Okay. Twice a month. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> when is the yep. next meeting month? Uh, on the 24th, I believe. So you want to try to get that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to be there, so. Who's on that thing? Sorry. Uh, I know who's on that. Bill Mayer, and Chris Sapp. Is that enough to 
filled out you and I both said I mean that I think the end score was like 83 or something oh right right Remember? right and, and I said look it over and see you if it was we wanted you to um, I, I felt it was too low and 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 I was really glad because Trevor read it too and he felt it was too low as well because he was it was grading the general contractor and we was, didn't have any we, had, we didn't have any problem with them and I thought no, they were I know. really good they were and we didn't have any way to Trevor, them. you got that? I, uh, I don't seem to. I'm taking a look here. I don't Why the heck wouldn't I have? Um, that should have been. Oh, yes, I do. I can give you this if you want. Um, well, just let me look at it for a moment. Yeah. Let me see. Why I don't have that. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was in your packet because that's how I got it. Hmm? But it was from last week. Yep. And I, I felt there was no. Um, there was no OPM Cause it was architect evaluation, and that was what I felt. It was a preliminary. It wasn't the mm. final one, Kip, either. Right. Um, the final one, I don't, I don't know the process. I've never. And you said you didn't know the process. But. Um, yeah, we couldn't figure out who filled it out. That was the idea. It was pre-filled out. It was pre-filled out. out. We weren't we sure who we did it. We weren't really agreeing with that. So All right. we, I do have it. We, we, I've, we I've were, filled out several. You've done them? Architects. Uh, well, we didn't have the architect one. Yep. And that was the one that we um, wanted to evaluate. You, you need to um, submit it to, um, you this, need to fill it yourself. So we have to well, download it. Town is the owner. So, but this, fill this was filled this out. Was already filled the out. OPM this probably filled it out for you. I see. 
But and we didn't agree with that. And, and of course. Correct. You might not agree with it. Okay. So you should fill one out yourself and then do okay. a, a separate submittal. I All see. right. And I'm the sorry. OPM, if you want him to do it, or you can tell him you don't, he doesn't need to do it. Okay. You can authorize him to do it, or you can do it yourself. Oh, no, no, no. Kip, you had a lot of stuff. But I, I just wanted, Trevor and I both felt that it was too low. Given for the, the contractor. For the contractor, and yeah. I, I felt it was too low after going to all those meetings. The contractor was very cooperative and I, wonderful. I have to uh, reach out to Kelly from Pink anyways, because she wanted something from us. She wanted a, a letter saying that everything was all done. And so basically what I'm going to... Yeah, I, I thought there wasn't completely done. There was it, no, it, everything is done. I was there today. Oh, okay, nice. and so the... So the, uh, the, the, the people, people from Carlisle came okay. back. And the contractor did change some flashing, uh, you know, so the war all the warranties are fine. They, there was a question on the little flat roof that goes, as you're walking into the elementary school the, to the left, there was a roof that's like 12 by 10. And the people from Carlisle didn't like the metal that the contractor had put up there. So he, he tore it all apart and changed it, you know? I mean, the guy talked about bending over backwards. That's why like yeah, that. and so the, the people from Carlisle were there today, and they approved it, and so everything is done. Um, okay. you know, but anyways, I'm going to reach out to Kelly tomorrow, and I'm going to suggest that she send me a letter with whatever language she wants, and I'll review it, and I'll bring it to you, and then we can well, look at that. Okay, let's, let's vote right now that I'm, you're authorizing me to sign the completion letter. Okay, so yep. then there's no issue. Okay. All right. Yep. So, so I make a motion to allow the chair, Carolyn Ness, to sign the completion letter of the DES. Um, is it not the contractor? No, it's, it, no, it's, it's a completion, completion letter, letter of the roof. Um, I'll second the motion, but do you, you still want me to reach out to Kelly? Oh, for yes. Yes. Okay. yes, but I, I just right. want to be not half us. Half, I know oh, we're meeting oh. weekly, but this way, when it comes yep. in, Pat can just have me sign it, and I can, we can send it right back out. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, and then you, when you're on the phone with her, would you ask her where those evaluation forms yeah. are? Because I was thinking that's exactly. the one that we um, want to chew on here tonight. <laughs> I mean, well, not tonight, but you know, hmm? that's the one I'm, especially the architect one. I mean, Kelly did a really good job. Kelly, Kelly was good. I don't, I don't like the company she works for, but Kelly did a, a good job for us. I had to. We wanted to make sure. But see, that's why I want to make sure that you are doing the evaluation because you could, you could, you know, give, give our OPM, on-site OPM, good credits, but say that the process was stinky because they shut, <laughs> shut us down or threatened to shut us down multiple times. And yes. then I want you to, you know, Gene Raymond was wonderful, but he was. But the other guy was terrible. Yeah, he was. So, so I want, you know, and he did come in, smooth out the process, yep. and it was completed on time. Mm -hmm. But there should be some way to. Oh say yeah. That there was Definitely. problems. Yes. Okay. Yep. So thank you. Um, all right. Um, and approve the um, Pat Kroll's. Yes. Now, in the packet is Pat Kroll's list of items. She's doing she's, over and above her work. Yeah, word. well, it's not in her job description, right? And um, where was that? That was. Uh, towards the back under um, discussed items, right, but way in the yeah, back. Yeah, keep going. Right before administrator report. Yep. Oh. Keep going. The next. Oh, the next one. Next couple, it should have. You should have had that. Wait a second. It should be. It's right after the uh, sewer stuff. Yeah, it should have been after the sewer stuff. Did you not get that? Okay. Here, I get. I got one. Oh, okay. Here. She made that list up. And so. Um, 
it works. It works out to be about $115 a week, which is uh, 450 ish a month, depending on how many days. Oh, okay. And um, you can't get anybody to come in for that, and it, and it and it's not worth it because they don't know our systems and. She'd have to supervise them anyway, and it, so it's no, that's right. It's it's less than what we pay to anybody else, and she is she's really stepping up to the plate, and she's confident. She's what what is really concerning for me is the liquor licenses and the um, you know all the permit all our permits are coming up. This is a bad timing in the sense that this is all our renewal period. So I need, to, I, need, the, um, I need her to get on it. Um, Priscilla doesn't do that? I thought Priscilla did. Priscilla is, and Dick process some of this stuff, but this is the renewals of the, yeah. you know, you have to send out the renewal letter, you have to send out all the paperwork. Like liquor licenses have to be done. Yeah. I mean, there's, only, there's about 15 of them. It's not like a huge, huge amount, but the problem is if you don't process it right, the ABCC won't allow them to have a renewal of the license, which is a huge economic impact. So, you know, the process, we try to be on top of it. They have not okay. sent out the new things yet, because Pat, I'm having Pat check the website, because everything is mostly um, downloadable now. Okay. But she's, you know, Right. Show me the initiative. <coughs> to, um, you can keep that. Thank you, Trevor. Um, she's showing the initiative to go and check when they're available to start the process, which is soon. Okay. And she'll send the letters, make sure they have the checks in, and then that we vote them. Mm -hmm. we, we have to vote them in December so that they're um, eligible for renewal in January. And all the paperwork's into the ABCC. You just don't, you just can't have that get screwed up. No, nope. I'm good. All right, then, Trevor, do you want to make a, a motion sure. then? Um, so I make a motion to um, adjust Pat Kroll's um, payment for, uh, to increase her hourly rate for $3 an hour compensation for out of grade work. Um, this increase should remain in effect until the starting date of a new town administrator. I'll second the motion. Um, and we should put it retroactive back to... When um, she started. Uh, Trevor left. I mean, Trevor left. Um, Doug left September 30th, so it would be October... First. Um, no, it would be October 3rd. It would be that new day. Um, well, it's only last week. Yeah. No, I know. Okay. I just want to make sure that. Um, so, so, is that okay? You want to second that? Yeah, I'll second it. Okay. Um, is there any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. All right. Um, Okay, uh, we don't have a, you have to, you're supposed to have a certified procurement officer. And yep. um, after Casey left, I mean, Doug was getting it, but we don't have one. So okay. Wendy um, helped Jane Trigier came in. She has another cemetery project that she wants to put, go through the procurement process through. So um, the historic commi committee is going to use their own budget to hire the FERCOG to put that good process out, okay? Okay. It's for the amount of money. And it's and it, and they already have the money, but um that's one of the issues of not having a procurement officer. So it's What's involved no, with that. No decision. It's just um you have to, it goes an RFP, it goes out. Well, no, right. what's no what's involved with being a procurement officer? I mean how do oh, you get you, to do oh, that? Oh you have to take classes and certify. Um and Doug had taken I think two classes. There, there's a series of classes you have to take to get certified. But as long as the person is going through the classes, the temp, you're off the hook. But 
duck left. So we don't they all put it. on by. Do you, do you know anything about it? Like, are they all put on by the state? Or is oh, it, they're all. Yeah. Is it something that's local, or is it all in Boston? Or? Um, there's different places around this. It's um, it's like. Uh, well, it's a kind of a racket now, but you have to pay. It used to, originally it was free, but now you have to pay, and they use private contractors. But it's it's a little. It rotates around the state. The MMA must have a lot of information on that, huh? Maybe I'll check into it. Sounds kind of interesting. Um, mm. it's, you go to the um, classes and you become a certified procurement officer. Um, and you can go. I mean, anybody can go. That'd be um, something that I think I'd like to learn how to do what's involved with that oh. anyway. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Because so a lot of times when I hear this conversation about procurement stuff, it drives me nuts. You know? It does. It does. There's a lot of. It involves <laughs> Chapter 149, which is vertical construction. You have to be able to know all the regulations and pass the exam. You also have to know all the regulations for 30B in Chapter 130, 30, 39M. Wow. So all the construction, all the public procurement, you have to be able to pass all the exams then you are considered a certified um, procurement officer for the community. You have to be a public official. That's pretty neat. So it's right up your alley. It, it normally takes about six months to a year to do it. You've got plenty of time, right? Yeah. <laughs> Does it, if you want to know until the, they come the in on tape, maybe right? I could get those <laughs> right. played on my radio. Yeah. It's one of those, it's, it's, an, it's a law that... Um, you have to go to the classes, and sometimes yeah. you'll do them in Huntington. In hunting, you can go watch a TV class. Yep, and that's all they do. Or you can go to Boston and actually hear it, have an instructor. Um, Either way, um, it's one of the have you done this already? No, I didn't. No. Um, you had one in our office, <laughs> you did. Well, okay, um, so <laughs> we we have, um this, this license came in, this, this liquor license came in. And so oh, I, um, this is for a Deerfield convenience store. Yes. Um, we have so, approved this, right? Already? Right. Yep. But what normally happens, this is, this is, this year's, this fee is $830, but it was approved October, mid-October. And, and it has to go back to the ABCC. So in reality, they have to renew this January 1st, and they have to pay another $830. Oh, so normally what we do is we on these things, we generally prorate it. And so yeah. I was hoping that if you both felt comfortable that you wouldn't mind prorating this. Um, I would prorate it. Um, and $138 is yeah. prorated for November and December. That sounds fair to me. Um, so I'm good with it. All right. So um, I'll entertain a motion, either right. one of you. I, I make a motion that we prorate the liquor license to the Deerfield Convenience Store uh, <clears throat> for $138.33 for the months of what, November and December? Yeah, let me just write that down. Um, oh, yes. Because it didn't happen. Okay. So you made the motion. And Trevor, you're going to second? That? I second. Okay. Is there any further discussion? No. Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Okay. Um, we sign both spots? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, because one, one's here and one's I there. I see. Yep. Um, Okay. While we're talking about liquor licenses, should we consider having a fee for tobacco licenses? We do have a fee. We do? Yes. I didn't think we, we did. Just, we did a couple years ago. Oh, okay. Because um, we were. The, one other thing that we sh maybe should think about um, is raising the uh, age for tobacco. Oh, you got to do this one oh, too. Oh, jeez, sorry. Um, raise one of our, the communities around us: Greenfield, Montague, Amherst, Northampton. Have now it's 21 for tobacco products. We hadn't really talked about it, mm. but just think about it for as of January 1st. So we could put sure. it on the agenda sometime in sure. November 
yep. we have to have a public hearing. We, we don't truly have very many um, vendors, but um, hmm. it, to me, it's a health issue, and we try not to. And what we would do is change the wording. It's just not cigarettes. It's um, all tobacco. All, all tobacco and um, vaping devices. Mm -hmm. There's some kind of wording that the boards of health have already sorted out so that you get the, the electronic cigarettes mm -hmm. and all the different products they have. They have amazing targeting young kids. It's just it's well, disgusting. Well, some of the products are, are, are pretty bad because they, yes. they actually make like candies and chewing gum that are packaged to look like candy and chewing gum, but they contain large amounts of nicotine, yeah. which, you know, is addictive. And, um, you know, it's... Uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's really gross. And so, um, and all the communities around us, I mean, the, the trend is for communities across the state to go up to 21, but our surrounding communities, uh, the larger ones, have gone already gone up to 21. So hmm. it behooves us to do it. It's not, hmm. I don't really feel like it's contra controversial here at all. I mean, there's no real issues, but we do need to have a public hearing. We do need to um, advertise it. Yeah. Um, and and I my thought was just, we normally issue our licenses January 1st, so sometime we need okay. to address it before yeah. then so that we're prepared. We're, we'll just start the year out. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it made sense. A lot of communities brought it up in like mid year, and it was like, oh. mm. I mean, we got so much going on. We were fighting the pipeline yeah. and doing all that stuff. It wasn't worth, worth it. Um, we do have to sign um, election. the election paperwork. Okay. Um, and so this is just um, uh, the ballot questions and it will be posted um, the ballot is not um, this is the actual this is the, the questions on the ballot I um, went to do this why it's all this verbiage here I went to Frontier uh, yesterday for that interview process which was kind of oh, fun cute. I should have been much more prepared I'll tell you the kids are really good and um, they asked me about all these ba I didn't know what I was going to be asked so I sat down and then they started asking me these ballot questions and I didn't really know them all I should have you know I should have been a little more aware but I think I'll come out looking like a fool on TV but that, that won't be uh, too far from the truth <laughs> but the, the, the caged um, you know caged animal law and and that really affects um, you know who it really affects is Diamonds Farm. I know, and it and affects how you buy stuff as well. And so, you know, as much as um, I'm in favor of not caging these animals, it, you know, there's a lot of other unintended consequences, which I, I just not that. Shuts down Diamond Farm. Yeah. So, why is he, uh, is why would turkeys? it, why is it it's not free range at all? Or? No, the, well, their turkeys are free range, but their chickens are in mm -hmm. cages. And they're, but the cages are plenty, are plenty big. And I mean, the place is Isn't spotless. there a, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I buy my chickens in the eggs era for years and yeah. years. I mean, I'm like a Oh, I know. They're, they're, a great, they're a great outfit. Customer. Um, and, um, you know, I can get our turkeys there and everything. And, and do they just have to adjust their size of their cage? I mean, their cages are already big enough. So why I, wouldn't they it, pass? It's kind of, I think that it's interesting that people are concerned that these animals are kept in cages, but they're not concerned that they pull them out and chop their heads off. <laughs> True. You know? I don't know. <laughs> it's true. Uh, yeah, I'm. I don't know. So I wasn't completely prepared for some of that stuff and the marijuana questions and all the other stuff. So the marijuana questions is pretty big too. It is big, and it's it's you know everything as I mentioned, and all is a double-edged sword. They all have these unintended consequences. So it's not easy to give it just you know a simple what, answer those, on it. I know, but thank you so much for going. I no, just, it's great. I think. I mean, my mom, my mom and my aunt went into the hospital before mm -hmm. the weekend for pneumonia. They're oh, home now, but good. And uh, my husband fell flat on oh, his no. ankle. Painting. Painting, and it just the whole weekend was a disaster. Yeah. No, it was it was, it was so, good. It was great to see the kids going. getting involved and. You know, and, and the learning that it, it, uh, they're also doing the video and how to interview and set up lights and all that stuff. So they've got a great program there at Frontier. So it's really good to see. I know. I, I did it a few and, years ago, so thank you for doing And they're hoping to uh, interview us uh, or anybody on election night. So yes. a couple of minutes if anyone wants to yeah. do that. We'll I, I think they'll be at the polling stations and they're doing um, exit polling and stuff on these questions. So it's, it's oh, interesting. Oh, honestly, yeah, God, good. You know what we should organize yeah. better with them? Then? Yeah. I mean, because it's... If, if you can't engage the kids, then... Get them involved. I know. Yeah. 
Yeah. I, I absolutely thank you so much. Sure. For doing that. Yeah. It's very fun. sweet. Very fun. Um, so. Okay. Um, make a, make a motion to um, sign to the that? elect state election oh. um, paperwork. Oh no, that's I'm I'm just going ahead with that letter from somebody. So I make. Oh yeah, that's yeah, next. Next. Okay. I, I make a motion to um, to sign the state election paperwork for November eighth, two thousand sixteen. I'll second the motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, shoot. Here, sign it. I already signed it. I mean, I figured we were going to sign it. Let me just. Um, so I made the motion. Yes. I just got to make sure that I have that correct. Please keep stepping. Just these two. Uh, no, there's. I think there's. Um, yeah, there's three sets. Okay. Um, I promise that I'll get the minutes. I just. Mm -hmm. I intended to be here oh, all day fine. Tuesday, and I I was only here part uh, a couple hours because. I was juggling so many doctor's appointments. It was disgusting. Mm, it's not fun. No, everybody's fine now. Good. Just started the season off with bad colds, and that turned into that cold turned into a. Pneumonia. Yeah, that's that's not that's mm -hmm. scary. I know. Well, we were, my parent, my both my parents were in and out of hospital last year. Ugh. For like till March. Oh wow. But my dad never got sick, so that was Good. a relief. Yep. At least one of them was okay. Oh. Okay. Um, we had a letter of interest um, from um, Ray Miller about joining the Cable Advisory Committee, and I think that would be fabulous. Yes. Did you see that in the um, his letter of interest in our packet? I did. I did okay. see it, and um, I think that's wonderful. So he just moved to town. Yep. And, um, and he's interested. He, oh, he's, wonderful. He retired from WTBA, Y and, and he, PBS yeah, station. He's the chief engineer. So oh, that would be great. Be, I know. I got really excited. Yeah. So um, I'll Do we just make a, a motion? Yeah, okay, make a motion to, to, to appoint, appoint Ray okay. Miller to the um, Cable Advisory Committee? Mm -hmm. I'll second the motion. Um, is there any further discussion? No. no. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. That's um, thank you really very fantastic. much, fantastic. That is great news. Um, and and we're really pleased that he is interested. <clears throat> he can be really helpful. I mean, if he was chief engineer down there. Oh, absolutely. He can answer all the technical questions. Okay. Um, the only other thing, oh, I wanted to bring up, um, well, the free cash was certified last week. Yes. And that was, we have a, a $1,585,583. So I think we're, you know, we're going to be okay for this coming year. Okay. But um, the other thing that came up was, you know, in the budgeting process, is an overlay, is the overlay worksheet. And um, as of November 7th, part of the um, Modernization Act or whatever, you can, you know, all these years don't have to be separate. They become just the One. bottom line. Okay. So that's a really good thing. Um, I don't remember exactly, but vaguely, there was something out there that the assessors were reserving Verizon about. Polls, yeah. About sixty thousand, they've been um, setting aside for the Verizon polls. That's where okay. we taxed the Verizon polls, and that's going through the court system. And so potentially so we might have, have to, to give back. that yep. back. So there was about sixty thousand out of that hundred ninety. Well, it's close to one hundred ninety-one thousand. So what I thought was maybe um, Skip Olmsted and John Cordier could sort of figure out, how much you know, how much they want to release yeah. or. Um, you know, 100, 120,000, or do they want to not just request any for this year? Because mm -hmm. usually what we do is in the budget process, we budget. We lay out and some all, first. Yeah, you know, we give them the money out, and then they give us about 
back. Don't ask me why it's kind of convoluted, but it sort of works that way. So it's government. So what I thought is that maybe John Cordier and Skip could come up with a number and suggest to us because it's right. The process is to us to formally um, ask the assessors to release an amount. <coughs> we should get an amount for right. that. Right. Instead think. of instead yeah. of having yeah. You know, make release, one and then have it a different. Yeah, yeah, just have them give us some advice on sure. recommendations and. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. So, I'll can I have, ask you a question on that enterprise sure. fund for the ambulance? That five hundred seventeen thousand dollars is that's the balance from right pre, Not pre the ambulance. Pre the ambulance. Oh, I understand. Yeah. Right. Um, yes. Well, yep. do you remember a conversation that we had at the South County thing where we had requested? an impact statement from the director as to what a 5% reduction would do. Yes. And the answer that we got was that the only area to reduce the 5% was through staff cuts. And to me, this is glaring that this is an area that you could well, reduce the assessment. Uh, yes and no. And, and the reason why I say yes and no is because, again, it's a startup, so you no, I, I, I would, get it, but this I, is. I would, I would, it, it, we're, we're working on it because I think. Oh, they, I, I, I think know we are. But time, if they just adjust some of their overtime, they're going to hire um, another paramedic because they're one down, and that will cut their. Right, but so you're and, saying the money that's sitting there now is. Well, there, the there's there's five hundred seventeen thousand left over. Now, out of that, we're taking two hundred seventy thousand. You know, that mm -hmm. still leaves one hundred forty thousand. Five percent of the budget is only fifty thousand. Right. So you know, to, if you know, so yeah, but if you, and if I'm not, they, I'm not saying that to yeah. do it. I'm just saying that you know, when, when you're asked a question, you know, like what impact, and then the, the response is, well, only it, through you know staff reduction. That's not the only thing. You know. No, that's true. But I think you can work through uh, their combination of overtime and regular time to do that. Mm -hmm. right. But also, we've got to, um, as, a, as a relatively new startup, we have to sort out what the capital should look like. Mm. Oh, know, I agree. Um, I and agree. that hasn't been sorted out yet. No, no, one's, I, no one's really looked at that yet no, in, in, in depth. No, I just, I just wanted to, to speak my mind that this is an area Understood. that could be looked at. Yes. You yeah. know, uh, and, and that's all I'm saying. Yeah. And, there, and, and, I hear you. And, and, that, and that's why our capital, the town's capital, when we had those budget cuts, where we had to balance the budget, yeah. that was eliminated versus personnel. Right. I mean, that's what we did as well. Sure. And, and so... I mean, obviously, in a tight situation. But I had heard better things about revenue collections. Good. Um, so hopefully, right. yeah. the whole thing will sort out. Mm -hmm. Yep. No, I, uh, I, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Working with them on it. Yeah, I just, um, I don't know. I mean, I think we do have, still have to be very conservative because it's going to be still yeah. the state. Yeah, it's still new and I mean, not sure. I honestly feel that Charlie Baker tries or is more sympathetic because it had, he was originally a selectman, that he won't cut local aid. He knows the impact. He knows what it's like. Yeah. And so, um, and I think that's why he was, Mitt Romney had no problem doing the 9C cuts, you know, like the midterm cuts. And he cut nasty things like, you know, our, the, you know, uh, the, we get reimbursement for the elementary school, mm -hmm. building the elementary school. It was a contract with the state to right. get 50 some odd percent reimbursement on the bond. Yeah, for and so Mitt Romney, when he did his 9C cuts, he cut the reimbursement for the elementary school. How many years did that happen? Um, it was the first two years of- But did um, we ever recoup that money? No, no. We had to go to a special town meeting and That's vote out money. of our you know, stabilization or- see, I'm but, not sure if it was see, stabilization or this, wherever it came and from. I, we voted the money to cover it. I and I, I remember I arguing this. I think it was the spring of '90 or '91. The same thing. Well, you know, so much percent for state. Well, what if the state doesn't pay this? Oh, the state always pays. So, you know, it's a lesson that we shouldn't forget. Yeah. I I just you never trust the state 100 no. because they no. can do well, whatever. but people change. But and they do whatever. I know. I'm, and, that's, and, and that's why it's important that when 
things come before not only this board, but before the town, and there's a guarantee of payment through the state, you have to really say, look at the only people that we can count on is our own in our room. Yeah. You know, for the most part, the state is there, but when things don't work out, they just don't, don't work, work out. out. They still gonna, they got to look to the community for the money. Well, it's like regional transportation. Yeah. They told all of us when we regionalized that we were going to get 100% of the busing back. I don't think there's been one year where they've paid 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Or only a couple of years. I mean, yeah. every year we're arguing to try to get to around 70 or 80%. Right. But I know that they've, the thing is they've, that's where the real problem is. They've just been picking up less and less of the real cost of educating kids. Yep. So, whatever. Um, now, we need to go into... Um, Oh, okay, I'm sorry. The both burn Harrington rent on town building. Oh, I, we, I don't know any more information than that. No. Um, uh, well, we, I mean, who, who, do you know who he paid rent to? I mean, did it, did it go to Brenda? Um, it, it comes into the town. We have to check it out, and I don't really know what the status is of that. Oh. We're closing on that building pretty soon, and whatever rent is due would be caught up before we close. Okay. So I wouldn't worry about that. Well, I'm not worried about it. I just do we don't want to let it go. Any no, questions from the audience? Please. Oh, Please. and do we have um, public comment before any we go into comment? executive session? Do you have any comments? No, I'm not going to make any. Okay. Thanks, guys. Some, but I'll <laughs> um, we need reserve, to go. Reserve. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. I move the select board you. go into executive session as allowed by MGLC 30A. Section 21A6 to consider the purchase exchange lease value of real property as the chair declares that an open meeting may be detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public body. Hi, McDaniel. Hello. Oh, you guess someone's got a second. Oh, second. Okay. Oh, who seconded it? Trevor. Okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. If you didn't work so cheap, we'd fire you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm pretty bad. <laughs> I'm glad you're doing it because I would be a mess at it. I'm oh, you. oh, a man. lot to learn. Okay. A lot to learn. Okay. So seconded. Okay. I'm McDaniel. I Ness. I Henry Camosa. Okay. <laughs>